Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Samuel McGreal. He says, The Daisy Standalone Survivor Loadout. Primary is the SKS with a PSO1 sight, a bipod on the underbarrel, and a flash hider. Secondary is the CZ75 also known as the CR-75 with a suppressor and tack light. We'll be playing the recon class with C4 for our Gadget 1, no Gadget 2, an M67 frag grenade, Spec Ops field upgrade, and the bayonet. Now Samuel's also given us a bit of description or backstory with this loadout. He says, this would probably be your average DayZ standalone loadout. It may seem a bit boring, but there's no time for flashy attachments in anarchy. The zombie apocalypse has begun and you need to fight and kill as many zombies as possible to get across the border safely. Your group has found some weapons and gadgets in an old Russian military base and you have been ranked as a marksman of the group. And I gotta give it to Samuel because this loadout really does look like it's a blast from the past. An old battle rifle with a PSO-1 scope on it. It looks old. It's got this clunky bipod on the front of it. Everybody else is running their modern weapons and stuff like that, but I've got this old blast from the past that is certainly an effective letta, provided that you're in the proper map for it. And you really have to give the artist some credit in Battlefield as the rubber attachment to the site on the back looks really worn and kind of gunked up. This PSO-1 was actually originally designed in 1964, so who knows how old this actual optic is supposed to be in game. Now I did make a really strong effort to use the bipod this time around. There are some areas that seem like they would be perfect for bipod use and I'd usually set it up, get one kill with it, and then get shot pretty immediately. And I tried this over and over and over. I was determined to get some good footage with it and I pretty much failed miserably. It got me thinking a lot about the nature of the bipod and just how it works in Battlefield. And the obvious benefits you get from it are increased weapon stability so I can put a lot of repeat shots down range perfectly accurately and not really feel any weapon recoil and that's great it's certainly a big advantage when you're actually shooting the disadvantage is that you can't move around strafe left and right and that just makes you sniper food it makes you an easy target for anybody who spots you so your life expectancy once you got that bipod deployed is very short and I ended up losing a lot of firefights even when I had my reticle pointed directly at the guy that I was waiting to come around the corner they would just kind of strafe left right a little bit I would be stationary and I'd be an easy target for them to take out and this is just one of those things where the real life properties or benefits of an item just don't translate into video games very well obviously we like to have kind of our arcadey elements to battlefield the shooter mechanics of being able to run left and right left and right and shooting very accurately right after doing that and of course you try doing those same things in real life it's going to be very difficult but because it's so easy to aim and move in battlefield there isn't a huge benefit to using some Something like a bipod or using stationary aim a lot. So aside from the rare situation in say a rush map where you can really lock down a corridor with a bipod and machine gun, there aren't too many other situations where it's going to be that beneficial, especially not on a DMR where your time to kill is long enough that anybody who's got mobility is going to easily kill you. Now in this clip here I'm hanging out in one of my favorite spots in Rogue Transmission. The base of this tower here gives you kind of a 360 degree area to run around in that you can pretty much shield yourself from any direction. I mean, you're always gonna be exposed on your backside, but as long as you can put your backside to the side that your team is on, you should be all right. Gives you a lot of flexibility, but you do have to watch out for people climbing up the ladders. And that's something that I'm trying to be aware of, and I do get a few lucky hip fires in this situation. Now, when it comes down to it, the SKS is one of my favorite DMRs for pretty much two reasons. One, it has the fastest rate of fire of any of the DMRs at 333 rounds per minute and it also has the lowest vertical recoil of any of the DMRs, making it easier to control. If you put an angled foregrip on there, you put some other types of attachments to even help you further with that recoil, it can be that much easier to control. Now when it comes to downing your opponent, DMRs need just about as much help as they can get in terms of the damage per second. And even though the SKS has a slightly lower uh, max damage and slightly lower min damage than most of the other DMRs out there, it shoots faster and every single DMR is a three shot kill at any range, assuming you're getting body shots. So if that's the starting principle, if somebody you're shooting at has 100% health 
you're gonna actually be able to kill them a lot faster with the SKS. It's certainly a bit more of a spammy weapon, but I hate to say it, DMRs just don't do enough damage for them to be precision weapons in Battlefield. You have to be a little bit more spammy to get your kills with them. And thanks to the visual recoil fix, you can now be very spammy with a DMR and a 4 times optic. In fact, I would recommend using a 3.4 or 4 times optic on any DMR out there. It's just gonna be so much more fun to work with and you're gonna get a lot more kills at further ranges. Now, ultimately, the SKS is a fun DMR, but it can also be really frustrating, especially when you're up against a lot of full auto weapons and medium range engagements, and not a lot of places to surprise people. And I was getting a little frustrated with this loadout, but it made me start to think, you know, I love the look of the SKS with this old school optic on here. It would be really cool to have some thematic servers, some servers where people could only use certain types of guns. Now, that's not really that easy to do in Battlefield 4. You can download some interesting mods that kick people for using certain kinds of guns and stuff, but that's not really a perfect solution to the problem. It did get me, however, thinking about the hardline server options that are gonna allow you to basically just turn off certain guns. So if you want, you could actually create some very cool thematic game modes where you can only use bolt-action rifles or semi-automatic rifles, pistols, and bolt-action rifles for more of a DayZ style game mode. Or if there's a gun that's just overpowered and annoying, you could just turn off that weapon from your server and try and balance it out on your own. You could turn off certain gadgets and stuff like that. And that really got me excited, actually, about the potential for Hardline, and it's making me think a lot about getting a Hardline server that I can pretty much customize and make my own style games or my own theme games. In fact, that customization alone could be one of the coolest features in Hardline that's kind of flown under the radar a bit. Anyway, I certainly got a bit off topic in this loadout video today. Don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with and what kind of theme servers would you set up if you're given those cool hardline server tools. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.